everybody welcome back to my channel so today for you we are going to be looking and talking about beauty blenders so i am a lover of the beauty blender i have used the real technique ones i have used eco tool ones i have used loads um, and i personally generally prefer um, the more expensive beauty blender one don't know why maybe it's just because I do like expensive things I'm not gonna lie I do have expensive tastes um, but uh, yeah I have been sent a new beauty blender to try so Here's my original beauty blender. This is uh, the one that I've been using for the past year. Um, it's quite pitted because I've got nails, so I dig my nails into it to kind of like really pounce it into my skin. And as a result, it's puckered. It's a little bit tired. Um, it's kind of getting to that point where I'm ready to retire it. So I have bought a lovely new beauty blender, which actually, bargain, Beauty Bay, eight pounds, just because they're discontinuing the color. Love it and it's the one that Wayne Goss is featuring right now. However, I have been sent this. Yeah, this. Can you see how it's all like furry? Well, that is because this is made by a company called Juno & Co, or Juno Co. Um, they are based in the US in, I think it's San Francisco. I'm gonna check, I'll tell you about them. So Juno Co was born with the goal to creating innovative and affordable products after all, makeup is just not about expressing ourselves on the outside, but how it makes us feel on the inside. I agree. So why not save some money while we're doing it? So they created the microfiber beauty blender. Uh, this is actually got a jazzy name. Um, it's called the microfiber fusion sponge. It's latex free and it's cruelty free. Um, and it's meant to be pretty good i've seen a few reviews some people really liked it some people it wasn't they didn't like it but it just didn't work for them um it's a little bit denser than a beauty blender let me sort of show you so if i put the two together see this one's got a little bit more bounce back this one's a bit more dense um this one's lighter and feels more like it holds more water whereas this one you can't really feel the water it kind of draws the moisture away from the surface um, but that is because it is like a beauty blender um, a beauty blender a microfiber cleaning cloth um, because it's made of microfiber all these tiny little furs that you can see on top is microfiber it's formulated to work with all types of foundation to provide an ideal coverage um, it increases to 1.5 times its size on wet application and it does have like a velvety feel It's kind of like one of those things if you don't like to brush things the wrong way You might not like the texture of this. It's kind of I don't know weird, but I do kind of like it I like the idea of using something that potentially is in itself less absorbent, but actually is really good at like holding product so the idea of this is that it's meant to use less product than your beauty beauty blender so what i'm going to do is i'm going to split my half face in half i'm going to do one pump on each hand and then we're going to compare at the end of how much product we've used um, and then i'm also going to do like my this on this side this on this side um, and we're going to compare and see whether or not uh, the application looks the same or different or what have you um interestingly um this is six dollars okay six dollars um now i picked this up for eight pounds on beauty bay that is discounted by the way discounted i'm telling you they're normally like 16 pounds so they are quite expensive uh but you know i'm really interested to see how they compare against each other um yeah let's give it a go okay we're gonna zoom in a little bit i'm just gonna prime up my face with my becca backlight priming filter because i always use that to prime my face i think it's important to use a good primer um just because it helps protect your skin and when it's like really hot like it is here in the uk at the moment you don't want like your foundation like dribbling off your face in the middle of the day and uh, this seems to to do a good job as far as i'm concerned so yes i like to use it 
although I am very concerned that I'm getting like about halfway down this pot and I'm like that's so expensive never mind okay so the foundation that we are going to be using today is my NARS all day a luminous weightless foundation um, and it's in the shade Mont Blanc Mont Blanc which is like the lightest I think it's the lightest shade they do they might even do one lighter um, but yeah so we're gonna try this one today <gasps> so excited and um, we're also gonna do like concealer and stuff with them to see how that goes um, and I'm just gonna do so we're gonna do what size should we do first we'll do this side first with the my new beauty blender um, and I'm going to do just one pump on my hand yeah that is one pump you don't get a lot with this um, foundation so maybe I'll just put one one and a half pumps on Okay, so new beauty blender. Um, I'm just gonna dot this on this side of my face. See how we get on with this. Okay. I feel like it's like spreading it really well. That's what it's looking like. I definitely feel like this one's harder than my original. Maybe it's just because my old ones like had it. Okay, um, starting to look a little bit thin on the ground. I'm just gonna have to put a bit more on my forehead here. I was hoping that I was gonna be able to use this, but actually it doesn't look that way. Okay, so you can just tell that this side is just a little bit more finished um, and kind of smooth looking in its consistency this side looks just a little bit more uh, blotchy and, and what have you with regards to the amount of foundation I've got left well I've got a tiny bit left but not much I did a pump and a half um, and there is a little bit you can see on the beauty blender there not a lot but do you know what like I feel like that was a good application for a pump and a half um, so yeah let's see how we get on with the Juno sponge Okay, so I did a pump and a half on the other hand for the for the other side of my face. I'm going to do one pump here and then, yeah, that's it. Exactly the same amount. Okay, I'm quite nervous. So... Apparently, you will need less product. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Um, let's do, do it here.
Okay, so we're kind of at the same sort of stage. Um, just going to uh, just take a little bit more, do my forehead. Okay, so, well, I've put it on. Uh, I do actually have a little bit more left on this hand than I do on this hand. Not by much, but a little bit. Um, application wise, can't tell any difference. I feel like it's blended nicely. I did feel like it didn't quite move around as much on my face, like I had to actually move the product rather than it like moving naturally. Um, so that's what it looks like afterwards, you can just sort of see it there on the sponge um, so yeah I've got a little bit of product left I'm just gonna kind of go over the top of my nose and down my neck with that using my normal beauty blender just cuz that's not really part of the thing okay so um, we're now gonna test out the Tarte Shape Tape um, I use the shade Fair and I'm just going to do a little bit of coverage with this. Exactly the same again. Uh, we'll do half one side and half the other. And just to make sure we're being consistent, we're going to keep the sponge on the same side. I never really feel like I need a lot of this, but I do feel that it does definitely help. Sorry, I'm just watching a plane flying away. We're just going to go in. This one. Um, and what I'm really looking for is like that smooth brightening finish that it doesn't like move too far away, the product doesn't suddenly disappear, but at the same time it gives me um, that kind of luminosity around the eye that just kind of lifts everything. Um, but doesn't crease or crack. Looking good. And then around the nose, I've got quite like a deep set there. So to get in there, I do have to like pounce it and I want it to be comfortable. And at the same time, I want it to blend out to the rest of my foundation nicely okay and that is now what we're looking like on the sponge okay so with the Juno we're going to kind of use this like edge bit and do exactly the same this is a little bit more dense so it feels slightly different like you're you're hitting yourself a little bit firmer but that's okay as long as it's not uncomfortable and you're still getting a nice blend okay I'm gonna try going in this way I want to get that nice sharp edge. So 
so right and then I'm just going to do this bit here this is like my the area that I've got the most like texture on my face like in between my brows um, I'm really interested to see how that sits Okay, so it doesn't look too bad so far. Um, I can't see any creasing and cracking on either side. Uh, I can't really tell the difference on the application. I feel like this side just looks like this side so far, so that's pretty good. Um, yeah, so far, so good. Okay, so I do have one final product that I use with my Beauty Blender and that is another concealer that I go in um, because I get quite like blueness like in here. Um, I use the Colourpop No Filter Concealer in Fair 2, which is like their lightest shade bar one, uh, which is white. Um, and literally what I do is I just put like a dot in here and a dot in here quite big heavy dots not like they're not like little little um, and then we just blend them out um, and it just kind of gives you that kind of very lit from within uh, finish um, it's not really about coverage it's about brightening the area um, rather about rather than about coverage I'm just gonna pat that there because I was getting a bit of a tickle okay so we're just gonna go in here and it's not about moving the product really around but actually pouncing it into the area to brighten it so there's lots of light little taps using the point of the blender to really just soften out those edges and really blend it into the skin but keeping it quite localized to that area So it just lifts it slightly okay so with this one it's going to be a little bit more awkward because it's kind of like going in at a point so I'm going to try and do it this way maybe that's quite comfortable yeah I feel like the blend on that is pretty good I actually feel like there's still like more product on the skin on this side slightly than on this side like I feel like it's lifted a little bit more on this side than on that side. I think that one's a little bit denser. I think you do definitely get a fuller coverage slightly with this one, um, which is something I've noticed between all three products, like the coverage is slightly deeper. Um, this tends to lift off a little bit more product, whereas this tends to actually allow you to press the product more into the skin, um, which is interesting. Um, it's not a lot. It's very marginal, but six quid or six dollars anyway. I could be on the verge of saying that this is not that bad for. Okay, so I've applied all my cream foundation products with my blenders. I'm going to do the rest of my makeup and then we're going to do a bit of a wear test. See if there is any difference throughout the day with creasing, cracking, wear, that kind of thing. It's the product, same product on both sides, it's just the application that's different. Uh, yeah, we'll see how we get on and I will be back in a gif. Okay, so I'm um, all done. Um, I still can't tell the difference, it looks exactly the same. Um, 
like I said, I think it's slightly fuller coverage on this side than this side, but mild, like tiny, tiny, teeny, eeny, weeny bit. Um, but yeah, I am going to go out, do some stuff for the day, and we'll be back later, and I'll let you know how it's all going. Hey guys, so as you can see, I don't have any makeup on. I actually forgot to do this update last night, so I'm doing it now. Um, actually, the difference between the two with wear time nothing nothing i had nothing to report like it worked exactly the same um so yeah it didn't um fade any quicker uh there was no more patchiness than one side than the other um yeah really really impressed with this little bad boy now the only thing i would say obviously is like i said they are very, very different. Um, you know, this one is a lot denser than this one, um, as you can see. I've not wet them or anything like that. Um, but yeah, literally, um, you cannot squeeze this one quite as flat as you can with this one. And obviously, you have got the weird kind of like edge thing, which obviously does allow you to get into different parts of your face in different ways. Um, and you have to try and change how you use it. However, what I would definitely say is that for the price of this one, it's definitely worth having a go. Um, it's so affordable, um, although it's something slightly different. I mean, it worked for me. I'm not saying it's going to work for everybody, but it's definitely worth having a little look at. Um, I mean, I will continue using my beauty blender because I love my beauty blenders. But you know what? I'm not going to panic when this comes to the end of its life because I've got my Juno sponge as a backup. Um, and it, I think, do you know what? I personally think this is gonna work really well with thicker cream products. It's also gonna work really, really well with powdered products. So if you're one of those people who likes to set your under eyes, um, this is gonna work really well for you. Um, I personally am not the biggest fan of like the, texture of this when it's dry but when it's wet it does feel different so don't let that put you off um and yeah just have a little play i'll link all the details below of how you can pick one up um and yeah that's everything from me so if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe um check out some of my other videos i'll pop them here um and i'll see you all next time take care bye bye